Hello and welcome to RIT Sports Zone. I'm John DiTulio. And I'm Kristen Clack. The regular season is winding down for the RIT men's hockey team and the standings are tighter than ever in Atlantic hockey. With just two weeks remaining, only five points separate the top seven teams in the league. RIT facing Canisius at Ritter Arena, looking to complete a two-game sweep of the Golden Griffs. First period, RIT on the power play. Adam Hartley scores his seventh goal of the season to give the Tigers a 1-0 lead after one. Second period tied at two, RIT on the power play again, and they capitalize again as Greg Noy scores the first of his two goals on the night. RIT defeats Canisius 5-3. We'll wrap up the regular season with a pair of games at home against Robert Morris and then a home and home series with Niagara. Two years ago, RIT hockey fans traded their orange apparel for pink and helped raise over $21,000 to fight breast cancer. As Emily Clark reports, the RIT hockey programs in Zeta Tau Alpha recently teamed up to support this great cause by once again showing their true colors. Two years ago, we first did this event and we partnered with the Lipson Cancer Center and Susan G. Komen for the cure. So this year we decided to partner with Lipson Cancer Center again, but do the Zeta Tau Alpha Foundation for breast cancer education and awareness. So can you tell me a little bit about being a Zeta and staying with the sorority over the years? Sure, well I graduated in 1993 and I got uh, immediately active in my local alumni in the Washington DC area. And presently, I work for the Zeta Tau Alpha Foundation. I coordinate a Think Pink program actually with the NFL. So what does it mean to you guys to be able to come to RIT and work with the sorority here and then also have the backing of the hockey program? Well, as an alumna, it's a, it's a privilege. The men's and women's hockey teams are doing great. Um, I was actually involved with um, the sports department as a student trainer. So there's a long history of supporting the hockey teams and it's just a really incredible opportunity to keep giving back and volunteering and you know working with the college students of today to you know bring awareness to this great cause because you never know where it'll impact somebody's life down the road. Well of course it's part of the alliance between RIT and the Rochester General Health System. So I'm so proud of both our men's and women's hockey teams for sponsoring this weekend of Make the Rink Pink and raising a lot of money for a wonderful cause the Lipson Cancer Center at RGH. Do you know what it means to the Lipson Cancer Center to have your sorority backing them through all of this? I think they're just really happy that like someone in the community outside of um, the Cancer Center can is helping them and supporting them and it's great that we're getting the whole RIT community involved. I think it's great. I, I think uh, anything we can do to help out and and for us, I know the uh, the, the pink uh, signifies breast cancer, but we, we really give it to the Lipson Cancer Center to decide on how they want to use the money best served for cancer in general. Do you feel any less intimidating wearing the pink jerseys <laughs> out there on the ice? I don't know, in warm up guys are kind of talking about it, but you just forget about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, once you're into the game, you're not really thinking about that. And um, it is kind of funny just wearing pink, but whatever, <laughs> it's for a good cause. Well, I told the rep before the game we're wearing pink tonight, so we can't be too aggressive, so let's not call as many penalties on us. But uh, no, I just, it's, it's, it's something fun, and uh, they, they kind of come in and wear whatever's hanging in their stall, to be honest with you. Can you talk a little bit about how you feel the efforts really impact the Cancer Center kind of in the long run? Um, I think that anything that the, the, the Breast Center can do, uh, Zeta 12 for awareness, I mean we know the, the number one way to beat breast cancer and most cancers is early detection and that's really what our message is. Um, Rochester General Hospital, the Lips and Cancer Center, they're doing great things to um, take care of patients, get them well once the, the cancer is discovered. I am a cancer survivor of about eight and a half years. Uh, it's a story of hope and love, really. Uh, life was grand. I'd spent the weekend at the LPGA not dreaming there possibly could be anything in my life other than good. I went for a mammogram on the way to work Monday morning, and they did further ultrasounds, and they said, we're sorry to tell you, you have a stage three cancer. Then I said, wait a minute. I'm going to get beat this demon. I'm not ready to check out yet. I want to live. For me personally, it's events like this. It's volunteering at breast cancer events that have so much more meaning because I meet people that are outstanding. I'm just 
somebody that wanted to fight and win. And you look over the ice and you see the pink and it's just an overwhelming experience. It's awesome. Make the Rink Pink once again raised over $21,000 to benefit Rochester General Hospital's Lipson Cancer Center and Zeta Tawelfa's Foundation for Breast Cancer Awareness and Education. While still ahead on Sports Zone, the RIT women's hockey team looks to stay number one in the nation, and we go inside the program with RIT men's basketball coach Bob McBain. You're watching RIT Sports Zone in high definition. Welcome back to Sports Zone. The top ranked RIT women's hockey team moved into sole possession of first place in the ECAC West standings after an impressive two game sweep of fourth ranked Elmira. The largest crowd of the season on hand is over 1,400 fans helped the women's team make the rink pink. The Tigers exploded offensively in the second period, scoring three times, including this goal from Melissa Bromley. Tigers led 4 0 after two. Third period, Tigers on the power play. Colby McCray with her second on the night and her 18th of the year. RIT wins 5 1. When it comes to recruiting, head coach Scott McDonald has traditionally landed student athletes from Canada. In fact, of the 23 players on this season's roster, 15 call the Great White North home. But as Melissa Bromley discovered, RIT and its hockey program were a big enough draw to lure a pair of California girls to the Brick City. Perfect 8 and 0 at home this season. Ariane Yokoyama, beautiful feed to Kunichika. Oh, shot it off. The... When did you guys start playing hockey? Together we played against each other maybe when we were like 7 or 8 and then we played with each other at like nine. And did you play together continuously all the way through college, all the way to college? Yeah. Literally, from when we first started playing together, we played on the same exact team in everything. It's mixing it up down low, Courtney Kunichika and her friend Ariane Yokoyama picking it off. With so much to do in California, how did, how did you choose hockey and roller hockey? Uh, my dad was helping out making a roller rink, and so we started playing there, and he just got us into it, so to start from that, like from like kids' rec hockey. Oh yeah, it was roller for when we were like three or four, and then when we, when I was like nine, I played ice a year with boys, and then we got, I wanted to play with girls, because they said there was like a travel team, so I asked Courtney to come with me, and so we played girls together. Did you know much about hockey in California before you met these girls? Um, actually, I knew nothing about, I didn't even realize they had hockey in California. So when the first email I got from Ariane was the first time I ever heard about hockey in California. Now how did the recruiting process with Ariane happen? She initiated it and uh, it was early on, my very first season. She was uh, grade 10 at the time and uh, I think the email actually came from her mom but it was, uh, it was labeled from Ariane. And, uh, you know, just explaining that we had some majors that she was interested in at RIT and that um, here are upcoming schedule for tournaments and if I could go watch then, you know, that'd be, that'd be great. Uh, I was actually blown away. How did you hear about RIT and how did Ariane's family have a big impact in you coming here to RIT? Well, Ariane was playing um, our RIT and her mom would update me on how she was doing and just about the school. So um, I was talking to D1s at first, but um, then I emailed Scott and he seemed really nice. And in the end, I just thought it was the best fit for me. The shot in front, rebound put back in. Courtney Kunichika with the goal or fourth of the season. What is something you miss the most about California? Uh, I miss the most my family and um, home cooked meals and my friends and stuff and the weather. <laughs> Individually, what do Courtney and Ariane each bring to the team? on and off the ice. They're both extremely quiet, you know, and uh, they're just very humble people, which is good. That's the right attitude that you want when you're trying to build a team. Ariane is more of the kind of a heart and soul kind of girl where she's just, she's the worker. She's just digs in the corners, gets in the front, gets banged around. And Courtney is the setup one where she's 
very skilled, very finesse, and, uh, but for some reason no one can ever knock the puck off of her, so she's very strong with it. How do you feel their friendship chemistry helps them on the ice? Um, it's huge. When they play, it's, you can tell they've grown up together the ent their entire lives. And, um, they don't talk to each other on the ice all that much. Um, it's more or less Courtney kind of directing Yoko where to go. And, uh, but more often than not, they make passes that shouldn't be made um, to places that they shouldn't go, but yet they do it, and they're very successful doing it. We kind of have this connection where we just kind of feel where, where each other are, and we just kind of throw the puck wherever, and somehow it just gets to, to each other. But um, I think playing with her for a long time definitely has like, evolved some kind of chemistry, and um, it's just great playing with my best, my best friend. Shot down low, and Nicole going five hole. The Tigers go up one to nothing. When you think of RIT men's basketball, you think of a man who has spent nearly three decades at the helm. Head coach Bob McVeigh has guided the Tigers to more victories than any of his predecessors, including 19 winning seasons. Last month, the head coach granted SportsZone an all-access pass inside the program on game day. Uh, just a couple things before I start. We got everybody? Yeah. 14. Um, there'll be some distractions today. Uh, we know what our main emphasis is and what we're here for. So uh, Sports Zone is going to be with us. Our, our traditional uh, routine is uh, on a Saturday, uh, bringing the guys in. We're playing at four. Uh, one, we want to get them out of bed um, and get them thinking about the game. Uh, we obviously talked about the game uh, last night as we finished up. And they're a type of team that will talk about quick shots. They'll, they'll just be dribbling the ball and shoot it uh, without an offense. So again, uh, you've got to make sure, I'm not saying they're just undisciplined, I'm just saying that's the style of some of their players especially. We'll outline some of the uh, things in the locker room that we really want to stress and emphasize today. Kind of get them loosened up, very low keyed, although um, we, we want to have an opportunity to walk through some things that uh, we think we're going to see today. Uh, just stretch the hamstrings out with a partner. Take about two minutes just to make sure. I don't want any injuries. All right, we're going to rotate uh, this way around when you're done. All right, we ran this drill, just a loosening up drill. Reverse, inside, ball, rebound, rebound, rebound. Everybody run into the board. You know, we obviously know who's going to start and everything uh, from that standpoint. Um, I like to, you know, I always believe uh, you take a look at, at guys that are getting in a good rhythm, even on a daily basis. Four, three, four, four. It's not a 40-minute season. We got a lot to go. We got 40 minutes today. Let's go. Right, let's go. It's probably the most difficult thing for me on game day. I hate waiting around uh, for the game. Certainly, we always go up and support the women's team. The anticipation is um, more stressful sometimes than the actual game. Because once you play or coach, to me, it's just an instinctive thing. At 3 o'clock, my assistants uh, take the guys up uh, an hour before up the aux gym and get them thoroughly stretched out and get some sh more shooting in. And then we'll have the pregame at 25 after the hour of 3 o'clock and then be ready to go. Let's go. Last week, we got 50 points in the first half. That ain't going to happen, all right? Get out there and defend right from the beginning. Fellas, let's go out and have some fun. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Play loose. Play hard. On the floor One, two, three. Yeah. Let's go. Come on. Let's get into our second break. Get your matchups. Let's go play. Let's go. Come, Come on, on now. Come on. First five minutes. One, two, three. Yeah. Let's go. Go. Bobby, Isaac, let's go. I need a defender out there. Look at the skip. Skip passes are open going up the floor. Come on, start moving your feet out there. 
Start moving your feet out there and talk out there. Right? Step up on everything. Right? Stop the ball! Stop the ball! What happened on the last play? I'm just saying. What? I, I just. I don't understand that. We just go back, flow in. Do you think they were going to throw a 40-footer up? There was five seconds left, seven, eight seconds. We should have picked that five up at half court and made him throw it over. But you know why? Nobody wants to talk. Nobody, again, nobody wanted to commit on that play themselves. Nobody. We got to get to their shooters, all right? We gave up two or three baskets early. We just didn't move our feet and get there. Hey, fellas. This is our game. This is our game. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's play hard. Play smart. One, two, three. Good. Give it to him. Give it. No foul on this drive down here. No contact. Rebound it! It's the one we needed. It's the second Saturday in a row that we got outworked. Second Saturday in a row of a team that was coming off a loss. And we're coming off a win. Came down the last two possessions at some point in time. We got out rebounded. We didn't block off. They got the loose ball. We didn't get to it. Down three or four. We need to clean up those things. We need to play more than one game in a row at a time. We know how we can play. Uh, we've demonstrated that in certain games. Uh, but uh, we, right now, uh, and I go back to some of it, I think is just inexperience and, and maturity as a team. We demonstrated last night that we can, we can get the job done. So uh, on you go. Uh, it's, uh, you just got to continue to work uh, and work out those, those issues. One, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> Last spring, Jordan McIntosh led the Tigers in scoring and helped guide the men's lacrosse team to the Division III National Semifinals. Following his remarkable senior season, McIntosh learned that dreams really do come true. Olivia Androsa has the story. Last fall, Jordan McIntosh's dream of playing pro lacrosse became a reality when he was selected fourth overall by the National Lacrosse League's Minnesota Swarm. It was amazing. I, I never expected to go as high as I did and go in number four overall. And this draft class was, was really big and it was an amazing feeling. It's been my dream since I started playing lacrosse. I was like four years old. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's a dream come true, to be honest. And, and I'm excited to be here. Jordan's been dreaming about this for a very long time and he's a pretty determined kid. So I knew one day it would, he would achieve his dreams. McIntosh, who will graduate from RIT in May, usually has to travel to meet his team for games in Minnesota or other North American cities. But earlier this month, he had the chance to play in familiar territory against the Rochester Nighthawks. And was it nerve-wracking to come back and play in Rochester? Oh yeah, yeah, a little, little added pressure. Everyone's all on you during the week, you know, how many goals are you going to score, all that kind of stuff. So, a little added pressure, but you know, just got to pretend they're not there and play your own game. Jordan McIntosh didn't disappoint the many friends and family that came out to support him in the game against the Nighthawks. With three goals and one assist, McIntosh delivered the best game of his professional career thus far. 
So what was it like playing the best game of your professional career in front of all your friends and family? Uh, it was pretty cool. It was cool playing in front of friends and family, obviously. We play in Minnesota, so they don't get out to many games. And seeing everyone here was, was awesome. Um, you know, we, I would have rather win than the, the personal stuff, but uh, what can you do? It was, it was fun, though. It was fun playing at home. Obviously, this is my first NL game to play in front of my family. My brother lives on the West Coast, so for him to be able to see me play, it was, it was a special moment. Uh, I saw them all up there with my jerseys on, so that was cool. But uh, yeah, and having my friends, all the RIT guys behind the net there, it was, it was amazing. It's very exciting, and we're having great support. Uh, the whole RIT lacrosse team came, and just very, very excited to be in Rochester. Rochester's kind of like a second home, so this is actually even better than playing in Toronto because there's so much support. It's, uh, it's pretty cool because obviously it's so close, and he goes to school in Rochester, so it's good to have his like whole like team out and uh, yeah it's sweet for me and my family because it's not that far away and it seems like it brings out a good crowd of Minnesota fans for all the Ontario kids who play on the team. While the NLL is a big change for the former RIT standout, he's certainly not playing like a rookie. Does it just surprise you at all to see how well he's doing his first year? Yeah, actually. I, I didn't think he'd come and make such an impact but it's, uh, it's definitely a very cool feeling so yeah. It's pretty sweet. I enjoyed having him while I had him, and uh, I figured he'd have a good opportunity of, of playing in this league. Um, like I said, I mean, getting to know him after two years, I, I had no doubts he'd, he'd play well in this league, too. McIntosh may be new to the NLL, but he hopes this is just the beginning of a long and successful pro career and a sport that continues to gain momentum. Hopefully lacrosse can build and, and get big and, uh, you know, guys can be doing this for a living and, and that's our goal, you know. I mean, it's a great product that we put on the floor and, and I think that uh, it's just going to continue to grow. Earlier this month, McIntosh was named to the NLL All-Star team, becoming the first Minnesota rookie to earn the honor. Following the indoor season, McIntosh will return to Rochester to play outdoors for the Rattlers of the Major Lacrosse League. Well, that does it for this edition of RIT Sports Zone. Don't forget you can stay up to date with Sports Zone by following us on Twitter and liking us on Facebook. So until next time, thanks for joining us in the zone.